I'm gonna turn this toy hammer into a real hammer, cast iron and brass, and I'll do the metal melting in my microwave. I started by gluing a 3D printed sprue to the hammer head. I'll be using a 3D printed mold. I'll make my mold out of silicon carbide so I can cast cast iron. And here I'm just estimating how much silicon carbide I'll need. For this mold I used approximately 400 grams of silicon carbide. Then I added around 10% of sodium silicate. At this point I realized that the mold was upside down. Basically I forgot that the hammer was not in the center of the mold. It's not a big deal, I could have continued, but that would mean I would need more silicon carbide. So I decided to start over. Fortunately not too much time was wasted. Alright, we're almost done, time to freeze the mold. I put it in a hot oven to cure it. The mold is still warm, let's see if I can remove the sprue. I use my microwave kiln to burn out the mold. If you're new to this channel, I have a video where I explain how to melt metals in the microwave, so check it out. I could do a very fast burnout if I wanted to, but that would create an instant smoke. I prefer to run my microwave in cycles with this cycle timer, so I ended up burning out the mold in approximately 2 hours. The mold has been burned out, now I need to get rid of the ashes. I'm gonna melt 222 grams of cast iron, it's a broken 1 kilogram weight plate. But before that I decided to heat up the mold, nice and hot. To speed up the melting process I preheated the crucible with a blowtorch before putting it in a microwave. After microwaving the crucible for around 20 minutes I decided to move it to a different chamber. It's a technique I use sometimes to make sure I could melt those higher melting point metals like cast iron. To be honest, in this case I didn't really have to do it because I realized that the metal was pretty much molten, but I did it anyway. It's probably been around half an hour since I put the crucible in the microwave. The temperature of the silicon carbide mold is almost 360 degrees Celsius.
And here's a replay from another angle. Because I'll be reusing silicon carbide, I soak the mold in water to dissolve some of the sodium silicate. Let's see what we got. And by the way, I'm not trying to achieve perfection, so I only sand it as much as I want to. It's time to prepare the hammer so we can cast the handle. I used a little bit of hot glue to fill the gaps. I smashed the silicon carbide into smaller pieces and I also changed the water a few times and then it was dried in an air fryer. A cereal grinder is a pretty good low budget option to grind silicon carbide. Of course blades will not last forever and you will contaminate silicon carbide with some metal but at least it came with two or three sets of blades and they are replaceable. Once I bought a cheap coffee grinder to grind silicon carbide and the blades disappeared after first time of use. So here I have another 3D printed mold. I'll be using recycled silicon carbide as well as some fresh new silicon carbide since this mold is bigger. And it's exactly the same procedure than before. Looks like I need a bigger bucket. I made the mold too thin, it kept expanding and cracking the silicon carbide, so I tried to use a clamp to stop it from happening. After freezing the mold it was time to open it up, I could definitely see another issue, I couldn't remove it without breaking it. After curing the mold in the oven, it developed a few cracks. Because those cracks were not in the middle of the mold, I decided to try to burn it out and cast. Let's see what happens. Because the mold doesn't fit in my microwave kiln, I just used the microwave to burn it out, because the mold is made from silicon carbide, so it heats up on its own. I did it in steps and it worked, but it's not my favorite way to do it. And then I finished the burnout with a blowtorch. I'll be casting the hammer handle from brass door handles. I cut them into smaller pieces so I could fit it in the crucible. I wanted to pull the vacuum while pouring the metal, just in case it helps. I'm using my vacuum casting station that is basically a mock-up of funnel attached to a vacuum cleaner. Pretty simple, but it works. Just 
Just like before I preheated the mold and I added a bit of boric acid. Boric acid helps to collect the slag and I can confirm that it works. I remember reading somewhere that it can also help with zinc boil out, with losing the zinc from molten brass. Obviously I'm doing something wrong because I keep losing the zinc all the time. Metal melting experts please educate me what I'm doing wrong. Why I keep losing the zinc? Are my crucibles too hot? Or maybe there's not enough of boric acid? Or maybe I'm adding the boric acid at the wrong time? There's something I'm doing wrong for sure, so any feedback is appreciated. I made at least two mistakes. I let the metal cool down way too much while I was playing around with the right camera angles. And the second, the mold was cold. That hammerhead is like a heatsink. I was pretty convinced that the cast had failed. Alright, let's see the result. Yep, it's a failed cast and you can definitely tell that there were some temperature related issues. So I needed another hammer because I already started the project and it was a perfect size hammer. I really liked it. The only problem, the store I bought it from didn't have more hammers. So I ended up driving around the town trying to find the same hammer without any luck. I turned around the packaging I noticed that the company who imports and distributes these hammers is not that far away from where I live. Long story short, I got two more hammers. Removing the brass handle from the hammer head took me more time than I was expecting. I ended up using a blowtorch to remove the final pieces of brass. Before casting it again, I wanted to fix as many mistakes as possible. First mistake was the mold. It was badly designed and just too thin, so I printed another one. Second issue we had was the mold cracking after using the oven. I'm no stranger to this problem and it's an easy fix, just don't use the oven. Another thing that could contribute to the cracking is the fact that the handle is soft and springy. When making the mold the hammer can compress and then in a curing process it can push back. Now honestly I doubt that that's an issue but just in case I wanted to address it. I filled the handle with some molten wax. When it had hardened I used the hot glue just like before and then I froze the hammer. I came in like a wrecking ball. And then it's all the same procedure. So after freezing the mold, I just let it cure naturally for around 4 hours. First I wanted to burn out the wax. I said that the mold doesn't fit into my microwave kiln. But I forgot that I have another much larger microwave kiln that I have never used before. The reason I haven't used it is because it doesn't have a lot of insulation. And quite frankly I didn't really need a kiln that size until now. So I might end up using it more after this project. Another mistake I made was that the mold was cold, so this time I heated it up before melting metals. And I'm just remelting the same hammer handle and I also added a piece of a door handle. The only question, can my microwave handle it? <clears throat> just a little joke. And just like before, I'm gonna pull some vacuum.
I also heated the hammerhead with a blowtorch before pouring the metal. If you pay attention you'll notice that I'm a ghost rider. Oh yeah, what a difference. Alright, let's open it up and see if we succeeded. There is a small hole, a small imperfection, but to be honest it's not a big deal, because I have a perfect solution. So what caused that little hole? Well, I'm not a metal casting expert, but I think I needed to make the spout a little bit taller, instead of pouring the hot metal directly into the hammerhead. Anyway, I'm happy with the result, so let's clean it up and try it out. And again, I'm not trying to make the handle look like it's been machined, I'm just sanding it as much as I want. I told you that I have a perfect solution to cover the hole, cause there's one more thing we need to add. Alright, let's try it out. There is a small play between the handle and the hammer, but I'm not gonna try to fix it unless it becomes an issue. This project is a good example to demonstrate that microwave metal melting is not just for casting small objects and melting low melting point metals. You can go bigger and hotter.